Okay, this is Paul, and on the bench today, we have this Tiffany Tone Radio, and it uh, was made by Herbert Horn. And uh, the owner says that it lights up, and there's no sound, and we're going to take a look at it. Case is all wood. Got a... Uh, been cracked through here, the nails countersunk there, and the side panel is a little loose, and you can see that better here in the back. It's missing one of the corner braces there. It's got this one, but it looks like it has been redone. So apparently the top came off at one point, and they reset it. Here's the other side. Um, and it's a uh, All American Five with a transformer. So actually, I guess it um, predates All American Five, but it is a five-tube radio. And, um, and last time it was worked on, or apparently it's been worked on a couple times. One by Sales and Services of Ace Appliance Company, and that was in Cyprus. I'm assuming that must be Florida. I don't know. And uh, the phone number is Cyprus three four one eight one or three four one eight one. Interest in phone number. Um, and Either this gentleman that worked on it, or this gentleman who apparently worked on it in 89, July of 89, um, Antique Radio Repair, and they were in Santa Clara, so uh, one of them identified it and wrote it on a chassis as a Herbert Horn uh, Mod 5 or Model 5 Tiffany Tone Radio and they wrote down the writer's schematic information writer's uh, number 6-1 so I have writers so no problem there I can pull up the schematic from writers and not have to go searching all over the internet for a schematic for it. Um, you'll notice it has goat shields on the cans. They're actually called the goat shields and that was the name of these, um, the manufacturer. And they, um, from New York, they shield the entire tubes with those to keep interference back out of them, and you see it has a single IF can, um, so we're going to take a look at it, um, put it on a very act, bring it up slow, see what we see, excuse me, <clears throat> and then we will take it out of the case and look at it some more, so let's see what we get. Let me hook up my little makeshift antenna here. I can find the end of this wire. Oh, there it is. We'll just leave that all connected together there. And just hook up my outside antenna to it. Okay, get that out of the way. Cord this way over to the Variac, an isolation transformer. And I would imagine it has a hot chassis, but we'll, uh, well, actually, no, it's isolated. It's got a transformer in it. But we will make sure it's off. Okay. And that's the channel selector. Mm -hmm. I can Temporarily turn this up for you. This is the volume. 
on off switch and volume, and that's the channel selector there. Crank up the voltage to somewhere around say 80 volts, just enough to turn it on, and let's see what happens. I see the indicator light on that is working. Should be an indicator light here too, but I don't see one. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so the lights are, he's right, it lights up. Tubes lighting up. However, we're going to take it, take the chassis out of the box, and check the transformer before we go any further. Let me just go ahead and shut it off. Shut the power down, and that's going to be our first step: is check the outputs of the transformer. So, be back soon. Okay, we got it out, and here's the case. The speaker was screwed in to that panel back there, and uh, we will clean this out, blow it out a little later on. So I'm going to set the case aside for now. And since this is a fully detached speaker, you can see they did repair work on it too. Um, of course, that was probably done back in 1989 when the speaker was repaired. Moves fine. We're going to put that speaker, since it has a uh, electromagnet, there's the electromagnet there, and there's the output transformer on the speaker. Um, and we're going to put that in a nice little box to keep him safe. So let's see what we got. I'm going to pause this while I find a box to put him in. Okay, I found a handy box to put the speaker in. Keep it protected. Actually, it's a handy box. So, let's set it in there. Um, we will be checking the speaker. In fact, we could do a little check with the with this here uh, little meter. If we get any mm -hmm. interesting, try that this way. Okay, the coil looks good. Uh, 1.2 ohms. Let's try the. Got a humbuck coil on it. from that speaker. But with that coil on it, I probably wouldn't. It is, it is measuring 1.2 ohms, so I'm going to assume for now that the speaker is okay until I'm ready to run a signal through it. We're going to put him in there and get the wires so that we can get him out of here somewhat. And it'll work. Okay. Ooh, they just soldered that. 
That light on front of the indicator there, and that bulb is a mess. This one they soldered right on here, but this one they soldered on the volume control, and the bulb is, is messed up. But I got more bulbs, so if we need to change that, we can. So this has a 2A5. Boy, that's right tight against that. Somebody replaced the original. Either that or the... You know, the transformer slid forward. It can slide forward a little bit more, maybe, but that shouldn't be touching the glass like that. Uh, coil looks okay. Not sure what these tubes are. I'll have to take this ring off to find out. Oh, 57, 58, and 56. Okay. I may have to find another box with these harder than wires. That's very close to where we're working here. But for temporary looking around... Okay, let me... Take the phone, the camera down here, and show you what we got. This is the bottom of the circuit. We got a couple electrolytics here. They're not original. They're dry electrolytics, so somebody replaced those. We got another capacitor here. We got some miscellaneous cobwebs. Can capacitor here and here, and nice big dog bone resistors. So we got to get this rearranged where we can uh, check it out, check for voltages and things. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and work on doing that. I'm just gonna have to figure out whether or not I want to unsolder the speaker to get it out of the way. Um, I might just test the speaker first, make sure it's working, and then unsolder it and get it out of the way so we can work on the actual antenna and I can use jumper cables to jump the speaker back. So, that's what I'm gonna do. Let me get it set up and then we will continue. Okay, what I've done so far is I put the speaker over there disconnected two of the wires that were too short that was holding the speaker all the way in here. So the speaker's in the box, and then I jumped the wires back to um, where they go. Um, let's see the white and the black. So one's here, the other one was there. And then um, I went to read these capacitors. This one I could see, it's eight microfarad the 450 volts, dry electrolytic, somebody put these in. And this sprig, so they, they were good capacitors. This one was between this black allig alligator cliff here, the second black cliff, um, there, and um, where I got that red wire. So I just, this was in there and I turned it to read the um, value, which of course is the same thing as that one, eight um, 
Michael Farad. When I did, this side wire just popped right off the end of the capacitor. There, yeah, just came right off. Shouldn't have done that, but it did. So I was like, well, I touched it on there, and I was like, I don't know. And then when I went to, I was figured, well, I'll just go ahead and check its value and see if it's good with my capacitor check. And uh, when I lifted it up to put the, the uh, probe on this side, that side let go. Just pulled right out. And see, it just came right out of there. So I know that one would do the same thing if I stop messing around with it. But what I did do is I went ahead and put in this capacitor so I could at least check the um, uh, filament voltages. And this being the rectifier here, those big, two big pins, you notice two of them in the back there are to the top and to the right are thicker than the ones to the left and the, toward me. Um, those two thick ones are the filament, and it's the same on all of the tubes in this set. All the tubes have thicker filament. Those two to the top right are thicker than the others, and you'll notice one of those thick ones, top right and to the right, one of the thick ones on every one goes to ground because it's not a series string. This one here uh, is grounded. You see it right there to the left of that red uh, resistor. And of course this one here has its own um, power coming from the transformer because it's the rectifier. So I checked the voltages on those and well on my meter here if I touch let's see I'm on I'm on DC, let me get back on AC. Okay, if I go here, you see I have, um, I have 120 volts going across the, that to ground. Um, because I'm checking to ground back, back here. I first checked it and it was what it should be, around five volts, six volts. Um, but across, then I checked across the diode for DC on both sides, and I was getting, uh, oh geez, 250 volts, something like that. So it's got plenty of voltage. The transform is working fine. Um, the next thing I did was I uh, got on DC and started checking, well, uh, checking DC voltages, like here. We have minus 2.9 to ground. Here, minus 3 to ground. And so I started checking around, and I figured, well, I started the detector and check plate voltages. Now, I'm not sure which pin is the plate, but I know those two are the heater, they're AC, everything else is DC. And when I touch that one, I don't think you can hear that. But there's a little bit of sound coming out of the uh, speaker. Well, that's the mixer. So then I went to uh, the first uh, detector, IF amp, and you can hear that I'm getting closer to the amplifier. So we know the amp's working. We know everything's working. The speaker's working um, by just checking the voltage on these pins because once you hit the grid and that obviously is the grid you're going to get some noise you can get voltage on all of the pins but that's the noise and then the speaker connects right to this one so this one here is the um is the output amp not getting nothing on that, but um, we know it's working. I believe that's the output amp. Yeah, it could be this one, but no, the speaker-wise are connecting to that one. So, not quite sure where the signal's going in at, but it's going in there somewhere. Anyway, when we check here, we got 
good amplification right out through the, the amplifier. Uh, some really weird work been done in here. You notice that wire just sticking up in the air there and uh, next to this dog bone kill pat, kill, uh, resistor, whatever. And, um, let's see, where's the, where's the ground on that tube? Mm, I can't see that tube very well. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see it now. That, it's grounded there. So that's one of the big pins. Actually, that one doesn't have big pins, but that's the um, heater element there. So this kind of weird setup here, that could be getting 135 volts there. So that's probably the plate. And this is probably the grid. No? This one? No, can't tell. So I'm going to have to run um, a signal through here and find out where it's dying, but I'm sure one of these capacitors is shorting the signal out to ground. And, uh, you know, because they're all grounded to the chassis every, every which way. There's so many chassis connections on this thing. It's unbelievable. Even the coils connected to the chassis. So they're using the chassis as the world's biggest wire <laughs> on this system, um, which makes it a very dangerous system because we've got upwards of 300 volts tied to the chassis. So that's fine um, because it is insulated, uh, isolated by that transformer from the mains. However, if you stick your hands in here and you put your hands in the wrong place, you're going to be um, getting a one-way ticket to Hopland, as Danny DeVito would say. So um, we get, we're going to be careful with it. But I need to change these capacitors and uh, first find out which one is causing problems, but I'm sure they, they're all toast. Um, I mean, look at that one there. Look at the sides of that capacitor. That's a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, that brown one there, this one here. That's a 0.1 microfarad. Look at the size of that can. Now it is plus or minus 10%, that's amazing, but, um, and I can't see the working voltage on it. It's 300, I think. But the capacitor that I'll be putting in there at 110 microfarad is going to be very small in comparison. We're not getting nothing, and I know it needs an alignment. We're not getting nothing out of the from the antenna system. So I'm going to flip it around some more, check these capacitors, check these components, and. I'll let you know what we find, and we'll look at them together. Thanks. Okay, Paul back, and I um, went ahead and recapped this Philco after I checked the transformer. And it was working fine. I checked uh, different voltages throughout, made sure everything was okay, and... Uh, Right now, I did a basic tuning on it and got it a little bit tuned um, using my signal generator and uh, adjusting the intermediate frequency. Um, but looking at the schematic, I realized that the intermediate frequency was a little bit different than what I had used. So we're going to go ahead and uh, basically align the IF can and uh, see if we can get some stations out of this. So let me power it up. And the set is already turned on. And we'll give it about 100 volts. Uh, 105. 
good starting point. Turn on my signal generator and we'll set this to the frequency. And you see I'm at 455. The actual frequency for this radio is 465, which is a little unusual, but so we'll turn it up to 465. You see the tubes are lit, they come up. Okay. Let's see if we can get signal through here. Turn up the gain. Ah, there we go. You can hear the signal. I got the volume, full volume. So we'll start with this one here. We definitely have a problem either with the tube or with the socket. Okay. I'm going to pause the video and see if I can tighten up the pins on that socket. Okay, we had a cold solder joint on one of the pins on the bottom of this tube, so went ahead and fixed that and the signal is way loud now I had to turn it down turn it down on my um, signal generator there and we'll continue we're still at 465 kilohertz and let's see if we can bring this signal up some Turn it up just a little so I can hear it. I think we're about right there. That seems pretty good. Let's see if we can get some stations. Uh, shut the signal generator off. Switch over to my outside antenna. Here. Now let's see what we got. Now, it's really raining out. We've had three days of rain so far, so everything's wet out there. And me being in the country, I don't get a lot of stations. But I've done a little reading, reading up on these, these tuned radio frequency sets, like this one. And... Um, They, they have a sensitivity, they just don't have very good selectivity. And that's when, uh, right before they switched over to super hydrogen. 
As you can see, I'm getting the stations considering where I'm at. That's pretty good. Give him fix this out. Try to add one. See if we get a little louder on some of these stations. Uh, let me get that off a of station. Uh, you're probably gonna miss what I'm doing because I'll have to edit the video. He's playing that song too long. Um, but basically, I'm uh, gonna try to hook up a ground to this outside antenna and see if that might improve the signal some. using a coaxial and trying to click the wires on the coaxial is not that easy so I'm going to put this 75 ohm um, to 300 ohm converter on there where I can clip on the wires a little bit easier and see if that might help. I know a coaxial is not the best thing for a radio antenna but I just don't have a a good system set up yet. I'd need to run a wire. These um, radios use a long wire as their antenna. So let's see if that helps any. I don't know. That wire is not quite long enough. Let me reach over here. Maybe if I set that gently there. I don't know. Let's see what that does. Okay, that's a local station, so it's really loud. Just not getting no radio stations today. Okay. That may be causing more problem than helping. There's one there, but it's far away. That's a Tacoa station. I think it was a bit working better with just the 75 ohm coax. Not much.
it picks up my local station really well. It's not doing so great on some of these distant stations. But like I said, we have a lot of rain today. And... the antenna, which seems to be doing just about as good. Also have a loop antenna that I made somewhere around uh, here. Let's join that on there too. Don't know if it's going to help. We'll put them both on. Find a talk station. Okay, we're going to try run a signal through there again and see if we can tune it a little more. Maybe it's the uh, antenna is causing an issue, I don't know, but it's back through there. See, I got the RF almost completely off and the modulation almost all the way down. So it's got um, amplification it just doesn't seem to have very good selectivity. The capacitor is working fine. Let's see if we can tune it closer to, to the closed side. I mean the open side. It's China, you hear that? Let's put out an antenna, that's just my signal. Okay, let's put the antenna back on and see what we got now.
Uh, I think we got a bad soda joint. We definitely have a bad brown there. Let's see if that makes a difference. A lot of these solder connections are so old that they Count nuggets or it's Well, I think we found the problem. Released on Monday is kale and cabbage tossed with apple cider, a mustard vinaigrette to top with all. Okay, let me go ahead and solder that. And you see what it is, is this ground part of this coil has come undone. It's just barely touching, and this is the tuned coil, so we don't really want to mess with that much. However, we can't have that coal solder joint, so we will reflow it. A little bit of rosin on there to make that dry cold solder joint spread a little better. This was the same kind of cold joint I found on the bottom of that tube socket. And I'll go through the bottom and check all the solder connections and reflow them as, as I go through before I put the radio back in the chassis. But I'm just right now just trying to get it to play so we can see what it's going to do. I think we're back in business with that one. Let's see. To warm up. There we go. Okay, this is Tacoa. It's about 20 miles away. Rain, rain, rain. We get a lot of rain. And a 50% chance of rain. Might see some sunshine come Thursday. Going to pack a little sunshine in the midst of all of this rain. Gee whiz. But uh, anyway, six, oh, we just 60 degrees in downtown Tacoma. Overnight low, 56, yeah. You hear that? It's got sensitivity. It's trying to pull in those right, stations. It is something right there. They just didn't have very good selectivity because, well, you know, they, this was the beginning of radio development in the early 30s. And, and that's my local station. Let's skip over it. There's something far away. Yeah, that might help. Yeah, now we're getting some stuff. This is almost like a a yoke coil here. It's very delicate, so I don't like to move it. Um, but apparently it moves from its factory position, because you can see the coil there. And with these tuned radios, everything was tuned. That's really loose. That shouldn't even be that loose. So when I get it perfected, I might just put a little shim in there to hold it in place. But again, if I was upstairs where the signals came in better and there was no rain, these stations would come in a lot better. Okay. 
That's the best part right there. So I'll probably shim it. I'll put a little drop of glue to keep it there so it don't move. I don't know where this station is, but it's quite a ways. There's another station it got a hold of. And that's Tacoa again, and you hear how good that's coming in now. It's fun working on these, because you never know uh, what you're going to find, like that bad ground connection, the bad connection on the bottom of the detector tube, uh, IF detector tube, and um, coil setting. Let's see what we get with full volume. It's overdriving that station. I'm just going to jump by it. talk about sensitivity we're actually getting feedback through the system um, because it's got such gain but once we get it on a station that's distant like this one That's got plenty of amplification. I think we got it about the best we're going to get it as far as tuning. What a good sound. Very good sound. Okay, let's get it on that Tacoa station again. Awesome, and I don't want music. That's about the best I can get it. And what I'm going to do is check it one more time with the signal generator because since I moved this, I actually retuned the radio. But this is where this is peaked. The reason it's called a tuned frequency radio is because it doesn't have much of an IF stage. This one has a simple IF frequency, so it's it, it, um, intermediate frequency. So it's not really a tuned frequency radio, but it's on the border of switching from a full tuned radio, tuned frequency radio, which doesn't have an intermediate frequency like this one does, to an intermediate frequency radio, which would have two IF cans. This has got a, a in, this is an intermediate frequency radio. It's not really a tuned frequency radio. However, it has elements that are carried over from the tuned frequency radio like this coil this is a tuned coil so the signal is tuned and then the if is added to it in the oscillator here um, it's added to the oscillator and mixer 
IF is mixed in with it, goes to the IF amplifier, then it goes to the detector, and then the preamp and the amp. And actually, this may not be the detector. This may be the detector. I'm not sure. Schematics are very vague because it's so old. This could be a bias tube um, to bias the voltages throughout the system, but regardless, it, it is what it is. It's, it's not like a traditional All-American 5. It's got some variants. An All-American 5 would have two IF cans normally. Okay, so we got it peaked. We're getting a lot more stations now. That's not there. That's the cola, which is really loud. That's some distant station. Another distant station. Picking up good. Plus, this is my local station, so I gotta lower the volume before I get to it. Good sound, good radio. So, we got it. We got it tuned to the best it's gonna go. It's got sensitivity. There's another one. That skipped from somewhere. In Spanish, there's, there's no Spanish stations near me. Did he say Miami? <laughs> skip this kind of time of the day but I'm getting it from different places but there you have it the radio is working at the peak that it can possibly work but uh, just to go ahead and make sure there's no issues I'm going to go ahead and check solder joints and get anything that looks like it might need uh, some resoldering this is all fine here so I'm going to check underneath and then put it back in the cabinet and we'll do a final test see how it sounds Thanks for watching my video. Be sure to like it and subscribe. This helps me keep uh, my video on the my videos on the air and keeps us working on these antique radios. Okay, we got it back in its box and um, radio station W. Hours, six minutes, and when you hear, you realize that you haven't slept awake.
That's why there's z -Quil Pure Z, a drug-free blend of botanicals with an optimal dose of melatonin nice so radio. you can fall asleep naturally with no next-day grogginess. It's available in both liquid and gummies. Tastes great and is not added for you. Pick up z -Quil Pure Z. From really the good sound. Goodbye there. Mm -hmm. The most shocking thing is when he says, that's what public education, the free college, the free schools is all about. These stations are far away from me, no antenna, so... But, you know, these antennas were made for a ray, um, an antenna line, a wire that would run from you know, tree to tree in your yard or something like that. They were not made for running on a little antenna. And I, all I have, I'm in my basement, so all I have is a wire running up to a window. But it works fine. Trying to pull in everything around. The Indians, Lady Indians basketball. He will follow both. Over on the road as girls coach Laura Baker and new boys coach Jeremy Hughes face a tough schedule of region and non-region games. Plenty of volume Lady even on WNEG, which is in the Mike next city. Okay. And there's the case. So, very nice radio. Thank you for watching.